right, welcome to the channel, and today we'll be talking about the LSA diamonds. And these were sent out by a community member, so thank you for sending these out to check out. And we will dive into these now. So with these LSA diamonds, the build quality is very solid, very Kennerton. It's basically just a rebranded Kennerton, so it's a very solid build. It's very light, it's very kind of drapes over your head for comfort wise. If you move a lot, the headband will start to slowly drift down, but not a huge amount. It's not usually a big problem. It's not even a really big deal to me. Actually, I didn't really notice it too much, but it can be a thing. There's almost zero clamp force. It has almost more like a, I mean, it's enough to hold it on your head, but it feels more like it's draped over your head than it is like a clamped onto your head. The other thing is it doesn't have a side to side swivel, but just kind of more of the up and down swivel. Other thing is kind of an interesting part is the, the metal is actually really solidly built and quality, quality built all the way around. And the wood cups are very nice. But uh, there is a thing where the wood actually does touch the bit here. And so I could see in the future, if you were to use these a lot, that could, that could potentially cause a scuffing or what have you. So maybe something like a, a little foam pad maybe to put there, like a little one-sided sticky foam pad. You could maybe put a little thin strip right there and it would help alleviate that. Not a big deal, but something to think about. The overall build is very nice, very comfortable. The pads are very nice and soft. The headband is very nice and easy to adjust and just kind of automatically adjusts to your head. No, no major issues there as far as build and comfort. Aesthetics are always gonna be a preference thing, so take that for what it is. My, my preference, I do like wood cups generally, and I do like wood built into the headphones. I like that with like the ZMFs. But as far as the my planner of choice, I actually much rather prefer the Rad Zeros build. I just love the way the Rads look. They are exponentially heavier <laughs> than the LSAs though. The Rads are much heavier. That's not a problem for me. I never had an issue with it, but it is quite a drastic difference compared to these. Uh, going into the sound of the LSAs, so I listened to a bunch of stuff over the uh, week and really enjoyed the sound of these actually. They're just a very easy to get along with listen. There was no major issues for me. I actually really enjoyed the overall presentation. They're a really lovely sounding headphone. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to have any complaints there. Uh, I will say that there's some tracks where it can get a little bit pushing towards sibilant, but that's a lot, those tracks would do that for almost any headphone, so it's not really a big deal. The LSA has handled this very well. Kind of talk about the lows, mids, and highs, and where I think these excel. And for me, I think these excel mostly with their mids and a little bit on, I'd say the mids and probably, not necessarily their highs or lows, but more that they're a nice clean, punchy sound signature there without being overly warm. They do lean a little bit on the warm side. And then the highs have a nice, to me, roll off to some level that allows for things to not be overly bright or overly splashy. And I, I was really digging on these. These actually are just a really easy going listen. It has really excellent imaging and separation. The The stage isn't exactly the widest, but it, it gets the job done. I think let's do some comparisons, I guess. Actually, before I do that, once again, uh, I also played a bunch of video games with these just to see how they go. And just because I've, I've been kind of enjoying playing Elden Ring lately and I play a ton of Destiny. I played them with Elden Ring and I thought that these were actually really, really fun with Elden Ring. They had a nice separation and imaging to the point where I could pick apart where, you know, enemies were or I could hear, you know, the, the, the soundtrack would kind of get in that epic mode. Got the blood going and it was, these were pretty excellent for like an RPG or solo game in Endeavor or like a sci-fi epic or even like a fantasy epic or something along those lines. But then rolling into, say, Destiny 2 and doing some more, I didn't do any hardcore PvP or anything like that, and in fact I'll show some gameplay of me just playing some PvE stuff. These were really good for that as well. I would say though that the stage is not quite as wide as I would prefer, but the imaging is good enough to where you can, you know, pinpoint where sounds are coming from and, and that will help. So yeah, overall, I think for gaming, these are actually also a pretty fun headphone and definitely lean more towards say the single player experience with these, but I, I thought these were fun for gaming. These did the job and for movies also, they were pretty excellent shows, that kind of thing, really good. So that's that and let's dive into some comparisons. I'm gonna start with Go Go Penguin Signal and Noise for the first comparison with the LSA versus or comparatively to the 
rosin rad zeros. So let's dive into that real quick. So this will be Signal in the Noise by Go Go Penguin. Okay, these are actually very, very close uh, as far as sound. I would say that the forwardness of the drums would probably go towards probably the LSA has a little bit more forwardness with some of the splashiness with the cymbals and what have you, but I felt that they sounded slightly more accurate to my ears on the Rad Zero. The low end, I felt the strumming of the bass. I actually, they were both pretty close, but I do feel that the rads had a little bit of an edge there. And also the tonality or like the, the lingering of the piano were, they're were very close. And I, I just, I wanna say that the rads take it with a little bit of an edge there. Overall though, these were pretty darn close as far as uh, performance. I, I do feel, and this could be my bias, I do love the rad zeros a lot. So take that with with <laughs> with this statement, but I do feel like the Rads edged out the LSA Diamonds ever so much. Like I feel like the presentation, the overall sound signature, just it grabbed me a little bit more with the Rad Zeros. But it's it's close. It's pretty darn close. So I would say between these two, you're you're looking at go with aesthetics and your kind of comfort level. Like as far as like, do you like a head? Like if you don't mind a heavier headphone, I actually. I, I would pick these, but if you are sensitive to like a heavier headphone, the LSA Diamonds might be the, the better choice over the Rad Zeros. But the Rads are, they, you can definitely tell the Rads are heavier. I don't have an issue with the Rads being heavy, so it's not a big deal to me. I must say the Rads, I, to me personally, the Rads just look fantastic. And comfort wise, I actually have no problem with the Rads. The LSA Diamonds though, I think, I mean, it's pretty impressive that they are like almost there with the Rad Zeros as far as performance. I mean, it's close, it's very close. And this could be a bias thing, it could be a preference thing as well. So take that into account, rather impressed. These are fantastic for what they are. And I think these are competitive price wise and comfort wise is pretty good. Maybe we'll do one more track just to compare maybe to a more vocal forward track and kind of go into that. Actually, there's a track I've been listening to a bunch recently. We'll throw that on and it's kind of a fun one. It's called, it's by 88 Rising and it's called Split. Okay. <laughs> kind of going back and forth a bunch there. Got this things turned into a giant tangled mess. I need to un untangle these cables now. Yeah, wow. I think so for me, the vocals were a little bit better on the Rad Zero for my preference. They were a little more forward without being, they felt a little bit brighter with the LSA diamonds. The Rads had a little more warmth to them and the low end was a little bit nicer for my preference. And these are, I believe, the dark tuning Rad Zero as well. So take that into account. The LSAs did have a little bit more brightness to her vocals and then there's like an echo the space that she's in singing it has an, an echo to it and it felt like the echo with the lsa's was a little bit sharper whereas with the rad zeros it had a nicer kind of tone out tonal balance it didn't quite have that sharpness to it it was a little bit easier of a listen uh, but not like this these are not negatives against the lsa by the way these were they performed very well in fact the lsa's are quite nice i really enjoyed the this track with them and it's just when you put them side by side with the Rad Zero, which is more in line with my personal preferences, that's where I, you know, I'm gonna, I lean more towards the Rad Zero. Uh, the other thing I noticed was that the low end on the Rad Zero, once again, these are the dark tuning, I believe, was a little bit more punchy boomy, whereas the LSA Diamonds were a little bit more just neutral punchy and cleaner punchy. But yeah, both were fantastic. These compete easily with, say, some of these other brands in the planar magnetic world. So it's gonna come down to your aesthetic preference, your you know comfort preference, weight preference, and all those fun things. So at the end of the day, these are pretty fantastic. I, I'm impressed and thank you to the community members who sent these out for me to give a try. And these will be going out here shortly, back to your home. <laughs> so hopefully I didn't have them too long for you. Anyhow, thanks everyone for checking out the video and we'll catch you on the next one.